good morning students today we'll discuss the second chapter of your book flamingo that is titled the lost spring stories of stolen childhood it is uh, an extract an excerpt extract an excerpt means a part from the book of the same title that is lost spring stories of stolen childhood by anis jung it can be also pronounced as jung but uh, as she is an indian so will be pronounced it as jung and not jung uh, the title is really very meaningful if we divide human life into seasons or compare human life with seasons the spring season uh, here symbolizes childhood summer season symbolizes youth and uh, winter is the old age and autumn uh, refers to death because in autumn the leaves uh, are shed from trees and here the spring season that is childhood is full of colors energy joy dreams but the childhood of these poor children is lost means there is neither any joy nor any color of health nor any color of happiness the extended title is stories of stolen childhood now what is the meaning of this word stolen stolen is otherwise we know the third form of verb here it is an adjective if something gets stolen it is lost unnoticeably means somebody has taken out the money from your pocket and you feel that it has been stolen it means you did not know that you were losing it so similarly these poor children here do not know that they are losing their spring that is they are losing their childhood as whatever we do it has a goal it has an objective here the objective is to sensitize you that means to bring to your consciousness to aware you to the aspirations aims and limitations challenges difficulties which are a routine affair a routine is something that happens very frequently say every day in the life of the poor so poverty does not erode your aspirations okay there are dreams and objectives in the uh, life in the mind of poor also but there are limitations there are challenges which they are to face every day like the challenge of earning bread and butter that means their daily food the challenge of survival here it is of the rack because of seema puri seema puri is a place which is in the outer area of delhi our national capital and another is of the bangal makers of firozabad so they live from hand to mouth and they have certain challenges which they face for their survival and the second objective is to enhance your skill of expressing emotional intensity emotional intensity here means strong emotions in black and white this is an idiomatic expression black and white means in writing so we know how to express strong emotions verbally but when it is there in terms of writing we sometimes miss the mark so in literature there are certain tools like metaphors like symbols like comparisons which make us express emotions strongly 
like uh, the author in the story writes the word garbage to them is gold so this is metaphoric uh, moreover unfold the literary bend in writing as i have just given you the example of garbage being gold okay so it makes you feel the malady of the deprived malady means their misery their poor state so what is the poor state they are so poor that any valuable object like uh, a plastic toy or some iron bangle or something else that they can sell to the junk dealer is valuable to them as valuable as gold so theme here means the central idea so the central idea of the lost spring is the poor condition of the street children the children who live at the roadside or in the streets forced into labor labor here means the physical labor it could be as a rag picker it could be as a cleaner it could be as a bangle maker it could be a laborer at a building construction site early in life that means in their childhood before they attain their teenhood and denied refused the chance of schooling means of learning of improving their life of a better future then there is a sub theme the callousness the cruelty of society society here means the middle class the teachers the lawyers the policemen the keepers of law and the political class political class here means the elected representative of the people to the sufferings of the poor there are so many forces but no force steps forward to check the suffering of these poor people neither of the young nor of the children so their lot their destiny their life remains the same so what is the focus of the author, author? means uh, where she has centered her attention so she has centered her attention in this book particularly in this part on the analyses analyses uh, means multiple uh, analysis multiple scrutinization of the grinding poverty this is a very strong metaphor grinding means crushing and what does this poverty crushes this crushes their aspirations their dreams their desires their ambitions and make them lead a life of mere survival where they are existing they are not as if alive in terms of desires and joy and the traditions which condemn these children to a life of exploitation so traditions here means something that is followed repeatedly over the period of time and that is believed to be the destiny of their lives so mukesh's grandmother believes if they are born in the family of bangle makers they can be nothing else but bangle makers so such kind of beliefs condemn curse these children to a life of exploitation so what is exploitation when you are not made to live a life which you are actually meant for so what is a child meant for education emotional health learning skill acquisition and not to work in a small hut of 8 by 10 by the flickering oil lamp or search for something 
valuable in the garbage dump. In these uh, two parts of this chapter, uh, the one that is about the Seema Puri and the another about uh, Firozabad, in the first part that is titled Sometimes I Find a Rupee in the Garbage, means sometimes I find something valuable in the garbage, the central character is Sahibe Alam. The name means Lord of the Universe. Say, not of the world, but of the universe. So, he is a rag picker. So, the Lord of the Universe, he is a rag picker. Rag picker means he collects something valuable from the garbage, like a polythene bag or something of plastic or something of glass, like glass bottles which he could sell and earn money would be hard for him to believe the meaning of his name so if he is told that you your name means lord of the universe and you are a rag picker he won't be able to believe it he lives in Seema Puri so Seema Puri as I have told you earlier is at the periphery of Delhi at the outskirts of Delhi he has come from Dhaka Bangladesh the reason of his migration of uh, is his house and fields were destroyed by repeated storms okay because there generally are mud houses so whenever it rains or there is flood the house gets wiped off so that is the reason of the migration from dhaka So poverty can kill everything, but it, it sometimes fails to kill the desire. So has a longing. Longing means strong desire to go to school. It surfaces when uh, the author narrator asks her why doesn't he go to school and further she adds if she starts a school will he come. And uh, Saheb with a broad smile says, yes, as if his desire was just requiring an ignition. And here the ignition was the question, if I start a school, will you come? So the moment it was ignited, there was a broad smile that shows there was a longing to go to school. He roams the streets, that means he... He roams the street near the author's house, means he moves aimlessly in the street near the author's locality with his friends barefoot without shoes. Is a partner in survival with his parents? There generally comes a question that uh, what does garbage mean for the parents and what does it mean for the children for the parents it was means of survival so if the child was a partner in survival he helps his parents in earning livelihood so how did he help by collecting valuable objects from the garbage has an intense liking for playing lawn tennis so the second liking was his liking for the lawn tennis he would very eagerly uh, look inside the uh, Court, lawn tennis court and watch uh, youngsters playing lawn tennis and that way identifying with those players he would get a sense of gratification fulfillment of being a player or playing lawn tennis he was unhappy working at the tea stall it makes an important question was happy uh, means was sahib 
happy working at the tea stall and the answer is he was unhappy why he was unhappy because he has lost his freedom and uh, how has he lost his freedom because uh, the uh, stall was of the owner and the bag was his although he was getting 800 rupees and three meals a day that is breakfast lunch and dinner but he was uh, no longer his own master he could not put down the steel canister whenever he liked so that way he was uh, not happy working at the tea store So there are certain key points in the first part. Uh, first is garbage to them is gold. So I explained it earlier also. Uh, it is a hyperbolic expression. That means it is an overstatement. Uh, garbage to, no, uh, to nobody is gold because it is something useless that we throw out of our house. But if the author is saying that garbage to them is gold, she has some deeper meaning which she wants to convey and here she wants to convey that they are so poor that even garbage to them is as precious as gold because it supports their life so the purpose is to highlight their poverty and the state of their misery uh, second important point is uh, when the author asks her why don't you go to school I said glumly, realizing how hollow the advice must sound. So why should the advice sound meaningless? Because if he was capable of going to school, why would he be spending time in collecting garbage? That means he cannot afford to go to school. And this word is pronounced advise and not advise. Advise is with S, that's a verb. The author asks Sahib, if I start a school, will you come? A few days later, she notices Sahib running to her and his first question was, is your school ready? So here two expressions, one is running and another uh, his question, is your school ready, convey the depth of his desire. It shows that all the time he was thinking of the school and the moment he saw the author, he runs to her. This again shows his strong desire and his first question was, is your school ready? Means he was all the time thinking of the school and uh, visualizing his going there. They had different explanation for remaining barefoot in the board exam this time. It was the question. So what was uh, their explanation for remaining barefoot? So there were different. One was uh, they like remaining, uh, remain, uh, remaining barefoot. Another was that shoes lie on the upper shelf. Uh, still another uh, was they don't like wearing shoes. But the author's comment was, was this the way of uh, justifying or hiding their perpetual state of poverty? Perpetual means a permanent state of poverty. And permanent state of poverty means they are yesterday, today, tomorrow, all are the same means they were poor yesterday they were are poor today and they'll be poor in the time to come so the author it'll relates a story or alludes to a story uh, from Udipi. So what happened, uh, author says that once she went to Udipi, where the son of the priest prayed to the goddess for a pair of shoes. So goddess granted her the pair of shoes and she comments when the son of the priest gets shoes he again prays to the goddess let me never lose them and the children in Udipi uh, afterwards had shoes means everyone of them but these children of Seema Puri remain shoeless so this way the author is 
raising a doubt, a question that why then the generosity of the goddess reach the children of Simapuri. So Simapuri was at the periphery of Delhi, yet miles away from it metaphorically. So this is one of the important expressions. Uh, how can something be near a place yet miles away from it? So let me explain. Delhi is known for its development. It has all the amenities like buildings, hospitals, sewage system, electricity. But if you go to Seema Puri, Seema Puri has around 10,000 rag pickers. They live in huts of tin or terrapolin. Okay, terrapolin is a thick cotton cloth or it is a mud. Uh, another type of huts are of mud and uh, the roofs are of tin. And there is no sewage system. It is a total wilderness. It seems as if it is miles away from so Delhi. So what this is what it means. Seema Puri was at the periphery of Delhi, yet miles away from it metaphorically. It means it has no sign of development like uh, the cemented roads or metal roads or well-structured houses or hospitals or sewage system or educational institution. So garbage to them was gold. This has we have already discussed. It was their daily bread, means it earned them their daily bread. It was their shelter, it earned them their shelter. Here it is something striking and even fine art. So what is fine art? Fine art is something that beautifies life. But how can garbage beautify their life? So if they come forward or come around any scenery, any piece of decoration, they bring it home and decorate their hut with it. So that way it is fine art. So hypocrisy of political leader has been brought forward in this part of the uh, story. So all these 10,000 people have their names on the Russian cards. That means political leaders are aware of their presence. Why? Because if they have their names on the Russian card, that will include their name on, in the voter list. But even after being aware of their condition, political leaders don't do anything. So that way, they say something, they do something else. That means they say they will improve their life, but they never do. So that way they are hypocrite. And these people remain poor. For parents, it was means of survival. What was means of survival? Garbage. So how it was mean of survival? Because it earned them their food, clothing and shelter. For children, it was a wrapped in wonder. Now, this is to be uh, discussed uh, in a better way. So, wrapped in wonder. What is a wrapped in wonder? A gift is a wrapped in wonder. So, sometime uh, you open a gift and you get what you never expected. So, that is a wonder. So, similarly here, the garbage, they don't expect that they do, will, would get a coin or a 10 rupee note. So when they get it, they feel wondered, they feel wonderful. So that way it was a wrapped in. In the second part, which is titled, I want to drive a car, it is one of Mukesh's dialogue. Uh, the central character is Mukesh. He lives in Firozabad in crumbling houses. Uh, crumbling means any structure which could fall any time. He was ambitious. Ambitious means he had a desire to achieve something in his life and uh, his ambition was to drive a car. Uh, that means to become a car mechanic. He is resolute, means he is strongly determined. When he is told that the garage is a, uh, at a far away place, he says, I would walk to that place. Uh, that means uh, he intends to overcome any hindrance, any obstacle that comes his way. 
he belongs to the family of bangle makers so ferozabad is a city where everyone is engaged in the work of bangle making different from his family his family is fatalistic fatalistic is one who believes that fate decides everything in life but uh, here uh, for him it is his wish his desire his aim which would decide his life and not his family so he believed in his dream so what was his dream to become a car mechanic to drive a car he does not dream of flying a plane why the reason is because he has uh, never seen one because few plane air uh, uh, airplanes fly over uh, ferozabad few means none or if ever then very rarely so let's discuss the key concepts in the second part uh, the first is his dream looms like a mirage in the dust of streets that fill his town ferozabad so this expression is something that confuses student a lot so looms here means hang mirage here means an illusion so here in the picture as you can see that uh, at the distance it seems there is water but when you go near there is nothing so in summer sometimes it feels uh, on road also that from distance you feel as if there is water at a distance when you reach there there is nothing so let's uh, understand it in the context of uh, mukesh so he believes when he grows up he will be a car mechanic so if we take his life to be a road and his dream to be water at a distance and we can take it this way that when he grows up this dream which like a thirsty person it seems to be water at a distance similarly to him his dream was like a water so as a thirsty person reaches that point of water there is no water he finds this to his shock similarly when mukesh will grow up his dream of becoming a car mechanic author believes will come to nothing so that is what it means that his dream looms like a mirage like that elusive elusive water at a distance in the dust of streets in the dusty streets that fill his town ferozabad so his dream is just an illusion and it will end in nothing when he grows up because he will have to become a bangle maker his sister in law that means the wife of his elder brother smiles through eyes filled with smoke so this is yet another expression which students feel confused about through eyes filled with smoke that means she was cooking and uh, on an uh, say earthen oven and grass dry grass was being burned as uh, a fuel wood and the room was full of smoke so her eyes were visible through the smoke so that is smiles through eyes filled with smoke so can god given lineage ever be broken so this is the dialogue of uh, uh, sahib's grandmother who says that if he was born in the family of bangle makers he cannot be any one else means or a car mechanic a student or anybody else he has to be a bangle maker so this is their belief so savita a young girl does not know the sanctity of bangles she helps make so sanctity here means uh, the cultural value so these bangles symbolize an indian woman suhag means uh, suhag here means uh, her uh, husband that means uh, her husband is alive so that is what uh, that is what bangles symbolize and old woman has not eaten even one full meal in her entire lifetime so this is another example of permanent state of poverty uh, author gives example of a woman 
हु सेज दैट एक वक्त शेर भर खाना भी नहीं खाया दैट मीन्स शी हैज नॉट इवन वन फुल मील इन हर एंटायर लाइफ टाइम सो दिस इज द काइंड ऑफ लाइफ दैट शी इज लिविंग so there are more key concepts in the second part so the cry of having no money to do anything except continue the business of bangle making rings in every home so why does it uh, sound in every home because every home home here means family is involved in bangle making they don't do anything different their parents have been doing the same and the parents of their parents have been doing the same so that is why all of them are poor there is a vicious circle so what is a vicious circle a situation where problems lead on to problem of middleman so who is a middleman a middleman is one who is the link between sahukar and the bangle maker who is a sahukar sahukar is one who buys the bangles at a very low rate from through the middleman from the bangle makers and earn maximum benefit or profit on bangles who have trapped their fathers and forefathers so how is somebody trapped through a temptation and what was the temptation uh, thrown to the bangle makers the temptation me the that they don't have to go to market themselves sahukar is there to think of them so they he will give them money at his door step means at the door step of the bangle makers so this way they have been trapped and little has moved with time it is not physical movement it means it changed with the time little means nothing years of mind numbing toil have killed all initiative and ability to dream mind numbing when there is numbness in your hand or your legs you cannot feel anything so similarly bangle making is so much demanding in terms of physical labor it tires them so much means the bangle maker so much they don't have any ability afterwards to analyze their situation so if you don't analyze your situation you never improve so this demanding labor have killed all initiative initiative means you step forward to do something different that is initiative and ability to dream so when you dream then you wish to change your life okay but when you have lost that ability to dream out of your hard work suffering and perpetual state of poverty neither you dream nor you take an initiative and when you don't do uh, both of these activities your life doesn't change so vicious circle is a situation where problems lead on to the uh, problems that i have explained earlier here from web of poverty to apathy to greed and to injustice so these are the four elements of those vicious circle uh, that vicious, vicious circle so web of poverty now what is a web web is woven by the spider to trap an insect which she feeds on so here the web of poverty has been woven as if by sahukars and apathy apathy is indifference indifference means when others are suffering and you don't have uh, any concern with it so here policemen keepers of law politicians can check in justice being done to these poor people but their greed somehow stops them and they grow apathetic indifferent to these poor people and their greed leads to apathy and together these two forces cause injustice to these poor people what is injustice they don't get the equal opportunities to grow 
So when their children don't get education, they're not getting equal opportunities to. So uh, let's continue. This two distinct worlds, one of the family caught in web of poverty, burdened with a stigma of caste, other a vicious circle of the sahukar, the middlemen, the policemen, the keepers of law, the bureaucrats and the politicians. Generally, when there is a question, which two distinct worlds uh, does the author talk about? Uh, generally, student uh, find uh, wrong answer to this question. So here it is clearly mentioned. There are two distinct worlds. One of the family caught in the web of poverty. So here uh, the family can be of say Saheb or of uh, uh, Mukesh, burdened with stigma of caste or with this belief that if they are born in the family of bangle makers, they cannot be anyone else. That means they cannot be a teacher, a professor, a leader, a lawyer, a businessman or anybody else. Other a vicious circle of sahukars, the middlemen, the policemen, the keepers of law, uh, the bureaucrats and the politicians. So sahukars and middlemen, they track the fathers and forefathers or the bangle makers themselves, the present generation. The policeman, it is the duty of the policeman uh, to uh, check if there is any injustice. The keepers of law here refers to the lawyers, the judiciary. The bureaucrats are the officers, say like the uh, deputy commissioner, fine, who can check child labor in a city. And the politicians are the elected representative of the people. So if the uh, bureaucrats, keepers of law and politicians don't do anything, then polit politicians like the MLAs, uh, the councillors or the Sarpanch, they are to come forward and protect these people. But n none of these forces step forward to help these people. So what have these two worlds done? Uh, means the uh, uh, poverty and uh, stigma of caste, uh, sahukars, middlemen, policemen, keepers of law, bureaucrats and politicians. What have they, they done? They have created a situation where the child has to surrender, imposed a baggage on the child. So nobody protected the child, neither the policemen nor the keepers of law. If we talk about bureaucrats, they had the same attitude and the politician had the same attitude. So together they have eroded their spring. So daring is not part of his growing up. A poor is always uh, told to adjust to the maximum extent. And when he is asked, do you also dream of flying a plane? He is suddenly silent. So why was he suddenly silent? This was once a question in the board because few plane flew over Firozabad. This I have talked about earlier. So go through the slides and uh, try to understand it uh, fully so that you have uh, some foundation before we start with the text.